Welcome back to Piers Morgan Uncensored. Yesterday, Enrique Tarrio, the former head of the so-called Proud Boys, was jailed for 22 years for orchestrating the attack on the US Capitol on the 6th of January 2021. It's the longest sentence handed down so far over the attack. His supporters are now calling for Donald Trump to say he'd pardon them and others convicted over January 6th. Trump has plenty of legal problems, of course, of his own. The Fulton County Court today heard arguments on his racketeering case. The former president pleaded not guilty, waiving his right to attend in person. Would you want me to discuss all this? It's one of Donald Trump's most fervent supporters and a regular on Piers Morgan Uncensored. Good to see you again, Carrie Lake. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. So, look, a couple of things uh, off the top here. One, the Proud Boys, the leader getting 22 years. I've seen the reaction to this. A lot of people think good, justified, the neo fascists. He was the ringleader. This is what he should have got for what people are calling sedition on that day and insurrection and so on. Others are taking a position that there's an inconsistency here in the way that they've been treated uh, and along with other January 6th rioters compared to other people who've taken part in other riots. What's your view? Well, I think Americans are coming around to the fact that it wasn't an insurrection. It was a staged riot. It was a staged riot to cover up the fact that they were going to certify a fraudulent election. And and here we're taking all of these people, many of them did nothing wrong, sentencing them to long sentences in the D.C. gulag, while we remember the summer of love, as they called it, in 2020, when we had uh, BLM rioters and Antifa rioters literally burning down churches, torching cop cars, beating people up on the streets, destroying businesses and neighborhoods, and they haven't been punished at all. And so everyone in America is looking at this and saying, whoa, we don't have justice anymore in America. Our, our legal system is in, in a wreck, and we can't even count on fair sentences for what happened there. And we know, as we've seen uh, tens of thousands of hours of video, some of it is starting to come out. We're seeing what really happened um, on January 6th. It wasn't as the media described it. It was not an insurrection. And many of the people were encouraged to go in by FBI informants. Well, hang on. And uh, also look, by I, the, let's not get uh, too far ahead of ourselves here. The, the truth is that thousands of people descended on the Capitol as a howling, aggressive, and it turned out very violent, in some cases, mob. People were killed that day, and they broke into the US Capitol, the absolute epicenter of American democracy, and they did it to thwart democracy. You might believe the election was stolen. Donald Trump might believe the election was stolen. But actually, most senior Republicans don't think it was stolen. Most Americans, according to the polls, do not believe that election was stolen. And actually, the enemy of democracy is not as you're trying to paint it, the FBI or those who mm. don't buy into the stolen election narrative, the enemy are people who genuinely propagate the myth of a stolen election, like you. Well, well, let me just say one thing uh, about the people who were at the Capitol that day. There were hundreds of thousands of people there peacefully protesting, saying we need relief because that election was not fair. It was not on the up and up. And there were some people who went into the Capitol and there were some instigators in that crowd. And we're seeing more and more of the video showing what happened that day. And you're right. There was somebody killed that day. Ashley Babbitt. She was shot. She was shot by a Capitol Police officer. And he's never been brought to justice on that. He has never been brought to justice. A lot of the people that ended up inside the Capitol uh, ended up there going inside, and they, the doors were opened by Capitol Police. There's a lot of questions that remain, and Americans don't see that well, as an question, insurrection. Here's a they question really that don't. I would put to you, Carrie. If it had been the other way around, if Donald Trump had won that election, if he'd beaten Joe Biden, and these were Democrats, hundreds of thousands of Democrats, storming the U.S. Capitol to try and stop that election being ratified with zero actual evidence of any election being stolen. Zero evidence. Trump's produced no actual evidence which has been ratified by anybody that this election was stolen. If it had been Democrats doing this, I can absolutely bet my house that you would have come on this show and argued the complete opposite. I, no, if, if the November 3rd election would have been 
rigged and stolen the way it was against the Democrats, I would be appalled as an American. This isn't about Democrat, Republican. It's about the way that election was run. And you're saying there's no evidence, Pierce, but there really is a mountain of evidence and more and more of it's coming out. We're looking at what happened in Michigan as more information comes out about completely phony voter registration. We watched as they pulled ballots from underneath tables after they kicked the poll yeah, observers Karen, there are lots out of, lots and started of, there counting There are lots of ballots. these stories swirling around, but what every single time it's gone before people who actually, whose job it is to say whether this has actually happened. There's no evidence. I keep saying yes. this to Donald Trump. I but don't know why he keeps flogging <laughs> the dead horse of a stolen election. Well, when, actually, what, evidence, when actually what he wants to be doing is, is trying out. to persuade people that he should be elected again. Give us something for the country to feel positive well, and about. And he is doing that. And he is doing that, but the evidence is coming out, and I know it's probably not being played in the UK, but it is coming out. Every day, more and more evidence is coming out about how bad 2020 was. The polls are showing that the majority of Americans now believe that the 2020 election was wrought with fraud. No, and they so don't. The polls that's are changing. Nonsense. People don't. That's true. Oh, Rasmussen Gary, that's an absolute... Poll. As we would say across the pond, that is an absolute 80, No, no, 81% it is, of Republicans... There are, no, Republicans, you said Americans. You didn't six, say Republicans. 81... 81% of Republicans, 60% of independents, right. and Actually, the majority of Americans of in every poll, the, election. the majority of Americans in every poll I've seen do not believe that the election was stolen. You know why? Because it wasn't well, stolen. I'm, I'm looking at polls... I'm looking at polls and I follow election integrity because it is near and dear to my heart. And I don't all think I want you follow is election every integrity, American... uh, Carrie. I think what you want to do, like Donald Trump, you want to fuel a sense that every time you guys lose a fair election, it's unfair and rigged and stolen. And every time you win, it's the purest example of efficient working democracy imaginable. That's really what it boils down to. When Trump well, won in 2016, no, it was, of course, a fair election. But I won't... Suddenly, when he lost, well, I will it's tell unfair. You this, because you just asked, you said President Trump needs to convince people why he should win again, why he, uh, yes. why they should vote for him, and he's doing a great job of doing that. He's putting his agenda out. It's called Agenda 47, laying out how he is going to move America forward, pull us out of the ditch that Joe Biden and his corrupt administration has driven America into. How he's going to strengthen us on a world stage. We know that we've lost our footing. America used to be a superpower, and now we don't have the respect around the world. And I'll tell you what, Pierce, if America falls. The whole world goes, and President well, Trump wants to end that nonsense war. Well, I don't disagree with you. And by the, the way, I just, by the way, Carrie, I've just written a big column for the New York Post, which has gone up tonight, in which I'm heavily critical again of Joe Biden. I think it's ridiculous that, given his clear mental failings, his physical failings, clearly the age is now a massive issue. Uh, I don't think it's right that he should be contesting the next election. But nor do I think it's right that Donald Trump is facing nearly 100 criminal charges, which, at the very least, will swallow up almost all his time in the next two years. You'll have no time to run the country. Well, that's what, that's um, what they've intended. That's yeah, but, what but they're my, intending my, my with problem, all of these But my charges. problem with that is that a lot of Republicans who, when Hillary Clinton was facing a similar scenario of criminal charges, all said that well, that would mean she couldn't possibly run again. They're now all saying the complete opposite. I don't think she was ever charged with anything. No, she wasn't. But when she was facing the possibility, a lot of Republicans <laughs> said, actually, if, she, is... if she's charged, she can't possibly run again. The difference in America is that the Democrats never get charged. You know, she can, uh, you know, bleach bit her computer and and destroy 30,000 emails and and take money uh, from all over foreign interests into her Clinton Foundation. And, you know, her friends can mysteriously just commit suicide and die, and, and nobody ever digs into anything the Clintons do. Well, they did but dig into it, but it I did, I, look, all that was obviously dug into at great length by the media. But I do think, I do think there is a bias skewed to protecting the Bidens in a way that it would never happen if it was the Absolutely. Trumps. All this stuff with Hunter Biden, which is leading closer and closer now to the White House and his father, I think it stinks to right. high hell. And if they were the Trumps... And that were exposed for doing all this. It would be a ferocious firestorm all over the front pages every day. So I do think there is a double standard in American mainstream media which skews positive to the Democrats and protective and goes against the Republicans. And on that point, we're going to end the Absolutely. interview because we're going to reach a rare point of agreement, <laughs> Carrie. But it's great to see you. <laughs> Likewise. Thank you, Pierce. Come back soon.